Here is a diagram of what this would look like. If a circuit element is parallel to the load, it means it extends between the two conductors of the transmission line at some distance from the end of the transmission line. Our goal is to add a circuit element such that the transmission line load in combination, so ZL in combination with the circuit element, creates a matched condition so that ZN, ZN, which is the combination of the circuit element and ZL, would equal Z0. Earlier we mentioned that the Millennium Falcon antenna has an impedance of ZL here, 35 minus J70. And the new transmission line has an impedance of 70 ohms. And we're going to say it's an airfield line and we'll say that the operating frequency is going to be 300 megahertz. And in this case, when, when we, after we add the, this new antenna, maybe we can also add a circuit breaker this time so that if the antenna breaks off again and a large amount of current starts to flow on the transmission line, it will break the flow of the current. We want to use the Smith chart to figure out what circuit element to add in parallel with the load and how far it needs to be from the load in order to match the antenna to the transmission line. How can we do this? Well, let's start with something we know. We can plot the load impedance on the Smith chart and transform it down the transmission line to see if there's anything we can learn. So we can plot this and start transforming it down the transmission line. Normalizing the load impedance is what we'd have to do first. So we'd have to take, we'd have to find little ZL is 35 minus J70 over 70, which is 0.5 minus J1. And this is plotted on the Smith chart here. I think we've done this before. Now what? Well, let's think about where we want our impedance dot to be on the Smith chart. Where is a matched normalized input impedance on the Smith chart? 